Don't give up when someone denies you your right. Thank you very much. This is this month's legislative update. Continue pushing it a step forward. We two bodies are all not alike. Yeah. Right? If you give people the chance and the encouragement and some supports, amazing things can happen. Hello, I'm Mark Hughes. Welcome to this edition of Disability Viewpoints. We have an action-packed show today. We have uh, some new information coming up on the census. We have some uh, folks here from uh, PROACT that are going to do a little skit for us today. We're going to find out more information about that. But our first guest today that leads us off is Cody Olson from the State Council on Disabilities. It's a very important time of the year. Our legislative session is opened, so we're doing Community Tuesdays at the Capitol. And before we get going, we want to invite everybody on Tuesday mornings down at Tuesdays at the Capitol. Meet us in the MnDOT cafeteria about 10 a.m. or so, 10 to 1045, and they'll tell you how to uh, get a hold of your legislatures and talk about the various different subjects. So without, with all that, Cody, we'll turn it over to Cody Olson from the State Council. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Mark. Nice to Thank have you. you. Thank you for having me on the You're show. You're welcome. I'm very happy to be here. Um, so, you know, the, this year is a, um, as you know, the state has a cycle. Every other year is a bonding year and the other, every other year is a budget year. Mm -hmm. And so this year is a bonding year and a policy year, which means that a lot of the bills that we're going to see this year are focused on bonding and are focused on policy related right. issues. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that, the council has a couple of bonding priorities that we would love to see push forward through the legislature mm -hmm. this year. And fortunately, two of them were included in the governor's bonding proposal which was released earlier last month. And these two projects that we are really excited about is making our state parks more accessible. So that's $10 million towards the William O'Brien State mm -hmm. Park to do a fully inclusive, comprehensive recreational experience for Minnesotans to go camping, hiking, and fishing. Um, so that's one proposal that we're really excited about. And the second one is with the Department of Administration creating dedicated funding for barrier removal of our state facilities making sure that people with disabilities can access the state government services and employment opportunities. Right. And we know that very soon there's a transportation bill uh, coming up. That's right. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about that, uh, what we should know? So the council doesn't have, um, we have um, on the transportation bill, mm -hmm. um, I don't believe the council has any priorities. The, actually, one priority mm -hmm. that the council does have is related to transportation network companies right, right. like Uber and Lyft companies. Right. Um, the council's been taking a hard look at how Minnesotans with disabilities use these services, and we found mm -hmm. that there is an equitable service for um, folks who use wheelchairs, for mm -hmm. folks who use service animals. Um, and so what the council has proposed is a comprehensive policy aiming to address some of these disparities in service. So mm -hmm. um, adopting a, a robust non-discrimination policy mm -hmm. and having some wheelchair accessible vehicle uh, financial incentives for right. drivers who provide those services. Right, it, it, it needs to do that because a couple of years ago there was a special committee that was uh, named uh, to do a special report for the legislature to maybe address Uber and Lyft as a metro mobility provider. Mm -hmm. And some of the testimony as I remember it there was somebody that came and said, well, they can't dedicate the driver. So that meant that the state council needed to go to work on it, and they did. Mm -hmm. And you've done some great work, and so you're putting forth some new uh, legislation and such to make this happen, and it's great. Right. Right. So what are some of the other things you're working on there? So some of the other bills, uh, one very important bill for, the, for our community is related, is related to PCA services. Um, one gap that a council member identified is that uh, folks who are on medical assistance, who are on MA and Medicaid, are not able to use PCA hours to, um, to transport around in their community. So they can't have their PCAs drive them around using their vehicles. Mm -hmm. And so the council uh, created a bill in partnership with several different organizations, such as the Consortium for Citizens with Disabilities, right. The Arc Minnesota Disability Law Center, we all worked together to create a bill that would allow instrumental activities of daily living to include transportation. 
And that bill's really exciting because we got a hearing in the Senate, which is the hard thing to do right now. You're right. It was the very first uh, bill that the HHS committee heard on the right. Senate side, which was really exciting for us. Great. So that means that we've met the first deadline, which is on March 20th, <laughs> and um, we're looking for a, a hearing in the House. Well, good for you. And it, it, it looks pretty promising at this point, doesn't it? It does. Good. It does. Good. We're very excited. Good. And so next up on you got are also working on is? So... Um, Another one that we're working on is accessible absentee ballot voting. Uh, we believe that it's really important that everybody be able to independently cast their ballot without relying on anybody for, um, for voting assistance. So we have a bill that would enable any voter with a disability to request an accessible version of their ballot right. in an electronic format so that they could use their own assistive technology at home to vote. And so that's moving along pretty well too? It is. Um, Good. We had a hearing in the House, and we're hoping for a hearing in the Senate very soon. Good, and that looks pretty promising, too. We need some uh, Senate support. Um, yeah. So members of the State Government, Finan uh, State Government Finance Committee, um, we really urge members to contact their senators and ask them to hold a hearing on House fo on um, the, the Senate bill. Right. So if somebody's coming down for Community Tuesday and wants to help out, the state council on some of the bills, it would be the voting, mm -hmm. and they could also talk about transportation with Absolutely. their various different reps. Absolutely. And uh, what? And a final thought, that if somebody's coming down to the House or, or Senate or State Office building, what would you recommend they do when they're talking to their to their uh, reps or senators? That's a great question. Uh, the first thing I, I tell people is, you know, tell your own personal story. Mm -hmm. um, it's your story, and... Um, that's really what legislators want to hear most. That's mm -hmm. what makes the most impact is when you can go to the Capitol and you can tell your legislator, who, by the way, you mm -hmm. are the boss of, mm -hmm. um, tell them your story, tell them um, what they can do to make your life better. And um, most legislators are, are willing listeners and they want to hear your stories. Um, and, and from there, we can, we can really get some things done at the Capitol. You know, an interesting thing before we go, Governor Walls actually went out and saw firsthand, it was on the news, what a PCA did, personal care attendant, that is, uh, every day in order so that person can make their Metro Mobility bus or their city bus and go to their jobs or school or whichever. And that was pretty important, too. Mm -hmm. That was pretty important. A final thought before we go, we got about a minute. Um, you know, final thought is, you know, I, I mentioned a committee deadline earlier on March 20th. Essentially what that means, it's a really important date because for a bill to be considered in the legislature, um, you have to have a hearing in either the House or the Senate for your bill by March 20th, and that's in about two weeks. Uh, so that's a really important thing for viewers to take away is if you want to see something happen at the Capitol, you got to make sure that it's yeah. heard before March 20th. Right, very good. And again, we want to remind everybody before we go, come on down to Community Tuesday. Tuesday mornings, you start about 10 o'clock to 10.45, MnDOT Cafeteria. So again, we thank Cody Olson from the State Council for all his hard work. Disability Viewpoints, we'll be right back. Remember that this year is a census uh, year, and so it's very important that you get your census information in. It's, um, and so now here's Susan Cush with some very important census information. Please watch this tape. Thanks, Mark, for that introduction. And I'm, it's a pleasure to be here again today with an update about the 2020 census. So the important thing is this week, uh, starting on March 12th through the 20th, Every household will begin receiving a letter that has a special code in it for you to go online and complete your census. The important thing to know is, is that these letters are coming out kind of in a staggered um, delivery. And what the feds told me today was that it's very important for people to go ahead and as they get that letter to go online and complete their census as soon as they get it so that the system doesn't get overloaded. Starting March 16th, if you haven't completed your census, a reminder letter will go out. And then if you still haven't, you'll receive yet another one on March 26th through April 3rd. And then if you haven't responded by April 8th, not only another letter, but a, a paper questionnaire will be sent to your household. Um, a final reminder will go out April 20th through the 27th, 
And if you still haven't responded, you can be assured that someone from the census will come knocking at your door. The other big update for, um, from the Census Bureau is that they are also, in addition to having questionnaire assistance centers, which you can find on the Minnesota 2020 Census webpage, uh, for assistance in your community. Um, they also are going to have some mobile questionnaire assistance centers. Now, the thing with the mobile questionnaire assistance centers is they will be in communities around the country and that are counties, country, that have a low response rate to help people respond to their census. So what exactly this means is that census response representatives will be visiting events in key locations, such as grocery stores, markets, house of worship, community festivals, public transportation hubs, libraries, community centers, and other locations where people normally gather. Um, thus, they will have a census tablet, um, or they can help you answer your census on your own personal device. How people can identify who these official census response representatives are is they will have an ID badge from the Census Bureau that includes their name, a photograph, and the United States Department of Commerce, Commerce watermark and an expiration date. Census response representatives will also wear a teal t-shirt and have an official bag that has the Census Bureau issued tablet and uh, that bears the Census logo. Locations will be have an identifying banner uh, bearing the 2020 Census logo. Uh, you might be wondering when these mobile questionnaire assistance uh, centers will be available and they will begin starting March 30th through the end of the census response operations at the end of July. For more information on where you can go if you have a specific disability, you can look at one of these following websites. Thanks again so much for having me today, Mark. I appreciate it. Hi, I'm Mark Hughes. Welcome back to Disability Viewpoints. Today we have uh, some folks from ProAct Playhouse that are going to put on a little skit later on and they're going to tell us a little bit about uh, the Playhouse itself and how it got started and so on and so forth. We want to have uh, uh, Stephanie and Amanda introduce themselves. They're both uh, the directors here, so we'll do that right at this point. We'll start with Stephanie first. Hi. I am Stephanie Osman, and I'm the program manager for ProAct Inc.'s day services. Part of those day services are ProAct Playhouse. And I'm Amanda Tom. Hello. Um, I am a DTNH instructor at ProAct. Um, I teach a wide array of classes, um, but one of those classes is ProAct Playhouse, and I write and direct for that class. Good for you. Did you have any play, any uh, play experience before and before training yeah, press? Yeah, actually, that's kind of how I got into the program. It was kind of a happy accident, actually. <laughs> um, I was looking, I had done PCA work in um, with, with a few individuals beforehand, and I was looking for something where I could teach life skills and um, in classes, and I found out um, when I went in for my my interview, actually, that they were looking for a theater instructor at the time. Good for you. Good <laughs> for you. So, Stephanie, what is uh, Proact Playhouse about, and what uh, who is your group, and why was it formed? Oh, wow. So, and, ab <laughs> and about 2008 to be exact. <laughs> um, Proact Inc. First of all, is a nonprofit organization. Our mission is to provide work opportunities, volunteer opportunities, and um, enrichment opportunities for. Um, people with disabilities to enhance their lives. Um, I specifically coordinate the enrichment portion of the services, and one of those enrichment opportunities is performance art through ProAct Playhouse. And 
gosh, now 12 years ago. We've been doing it for 12 years. Um, my background is in theater as well. Um, I'm speech communication theater emphasis. Um, I'm also part of a dinner theater company, so I just love the performing arts. So it began as... Um, so you're busy in other words. Yes, I'm very busy, <laughs> but it, it began um, as just a theater games class, and it was me and another staff, and soon as the games started progressing and folks started participating, we realized, wow, we have something here. Um, these folks really want to participate and be seen. So then it just developed from there, and now it's, I have two staff that have backgrounds in theater, which is great, so we have this core team of a teaching artist that handles the performance side of things, and then um, Kelly Campion is our production and stage manager, so she handles that um, part of the show, and then all of the experienced season actors, and it's become this great opportunity for them to perform publicly for the community. Great, great. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, why are the arts so powerful in communication medium, and what topics do you uh, tackle? And that question's for Amanda. Yeah, um, I would have to say, like seeing, I've never seen any other medium affect people so powerfully. Um, and I, I will say like, theater and performing arts has this really magical quality of bringing people together in a space and building a community um, and making people feel as if they belong. Um, and I also feel like it's a really great way, theater is a really great way to challenge individuals, um, to also make them think, mm -hmm. um, but of also- expressing yourself. Yeah, right? and expressing themselves, and I think it's a really great medium, um, a really great way to like inform people about certain mm -hmm. issues, but maybe tackling issues in a fun way, so people are like, people don't always like feel like they're being for steady sort of, you know. And what are some of those uh, issues that you, st that stand out that yeah, you Yeah, so the great thing about ProAct Playhouse is we collaborate, um, not just the instructors in the class, um, but also all of the students in our class are allowed to um, give input on their ideas, what kind of show they'd like to do, what kind of issues they'd like to tackle. Um, and I think that's one of my favorite things about the process um, when it comes to working on shows in ProAct Playhouse. Um, in the past, we've done shows, there was a show called Welcome to Our World, which, um, yeah, which was about, um, it was actually like firsthand stories uh, from individuals in our class about maybe like social issues they might experience, um, job, job issues, like what it might be like. So it was educational. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it was educational mm -hmm. too, yeah. Good. Uh, why Why is it important for people with disabilities to be in the community, up on stage and living their lives, and for other folks to see, maybe in the disability community, or relatives, or, or whichever? Well, I have a lot of friends with different abilities and who d uh, does things differently. Um, I think it's a great way for for people like us to express our feelings, make new friends, come out of their shell, and really learn the ins and outs about really acting and learning how to be a professional as 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 well. I am actually in a professional play myself. I've heard you're the man. You're so the star. Um, so I think it's a really great way for other people to really learn about like more about themselves and what they can do and what their talents really are. Eric, your television career isn't over yet. <laughs> what what is it like to hear the reactions of your audience? How does the ener tra energy transfer to what you uh, are doing on the stage? Well, it's it feels great to have the support of our basically audiences that we have because they come to watch our plays and they think they're really, really good and they love them. <laughs> so hats off to that. <laughs> Us as actors really feed off on that basically energy because um, it helps us learn our lines. It helps us learn that we have to have diction to really help them hear what, uh, 
uh, but to a scene as as well. You know, you're one of the better interviews that's been done in a while. You did a great job with that. Thanks for being with us, um, Joe. What what skills have you uh, are you learning uh, by doing these plays in production and other things? Well, I used to play a, a tech team beforehand and tech team is that technical? Yeah. Okay. Like you know the, the production technical. Yeah. Okay. And then I just became an actor after that. Well, everybody's got <laughs> it in them, don't they? Yeah. How long have you been doing it? For a while. So, what things have you learned? Well, I've learned to uh, stuff or speak more clearly and not be afraid of the stage. Oh, all right. Speak more clearly and not get stage fright. Get stage fright. Well, that's very good. Um, this is a question for all of you. How did you, uh, you get involved in, in Pro Act Playhouse? Peter, do you want to go first? Okay. Um, I got involved with Pro Act Playhouse because I enjoyed it. Just um, being with my friends and stuff. <coughs> and um, speaking clearly, just um, being up on stage a lot. Good. And did we get your name before? Uh, Katie. Katie, let's get that, okay. And who wants to go next? Megan, you want to go? My name is Megan Summer. I'm a volunteer to the Sims Hanover Club. The way I got involved with Pro Act Playhouse was actually through an annual meeting that I have at, my, at Pro Act Hanley through my old case manager and Stephanie's brother. He he was um, he actually stayed on me about joining theater, and I thought, well, why not? I'll give it a shot and just see if it'll help me not just grow physically and mentally, but also um, grow as an actor. Great, that was a great reply. How does the perspective of people with disabilities come through in the shows, and how has involvement? with the theater made you a better person? How have you grown, in other words? Well, it's made me a better person because I, this being out there for, you know, to be seen, and just know that here I am, world. Um, <laughs> it, so that kind of piece basically like, that kind of piece like basically like there and just being on stage and learning lines, learning how to speak and speak louder is just, it, so, makes all the, it, it makes basically all the difference. So Eric, before you go, it's a confidence builder in other words. Yes. Good. And next, uh, we want to pose the same question. How does the perspective of people with disabilities come through in these shows and how is that involvement with this theater made you a better person? Well, I got off my stage fright now, so. And well, good for you. Yeah, you're doing pretty yeah. well. I've noticed. <laughs> you're about ready to take over. I can see it. I'm afraid. I'm afraid. Retirement might be coming near, but I don't think so. And I also became more creative with stuff. Well, good. And the creativity uh, brings out your talent, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. yeah. Katie, how does the perspective of people with disabilities come through in these shows, and how has the involvement with this very important theater made you a better person? Because um, um, I always look forward to the shows when we do it. Why is that? Because um, I could be myself. <laughs> there you go. There you go. That's pretty important, isn't it? And uh, do you think your family uh, gets involved or they're proud of what you're doing? I'm sure. Yeah, they are. Good. <laughs> Good. Well, that's important too, isn't it? And your neighbors see it and all the people that you're... No, my uh, sisters see it a lot. Great. Great. Well, that's important too. Who, who do we have down here? How does the perspective of people with disabilities come through in these shows and how is the involvement with this theater? 
Major well, I um, down system and um, <laughs> yeah, well, it's my my family, my friends, my neighbors uh, support me. They support you in the shows. In the shows. Great. Mm -hmm. And I I I think we're gonna see a uh, a segment coming up here. So, do the folks want to get ready for that? And and uh, mm -hmm. we'll be back with more disability viewpoints in just a second. Stay tuned, please. the show off with a good laugh. Oh, keep the show moving, Bartimus. I'm trying Florence. Wait, Florence, come out here. Why? Yeah, you're funny, right? <laughs> okay. My last boyfriend told me I was funny. Funny looking. That's when we're not together anymore. Hilarious. Gosh, you right. Please welcome to the stage Florence the Comedian. But I'm the stage manager. Oh gosh, it's kind of scary being out here alone. Keep it moving, Florence. A clown that gives his girlfriend flowers, a romance jester. Um, a clown that retires and gives him okay. big shoes. <laughs> Does a Clown fart. Does it spell funny? God, stop flirting. You kill me. Literally. If you tell any more jokes, I'm going to die of embarrassment. Oh, Get back I got, to the stage management now. I got one more joke. Get back to the stage you. now. Welcome back to Disability Viewpoints. This is the final word segment. Amanda's here to talk about an upcoming play for PROACT and some other information. So I'm yeah. to take it away. Yeah, so we have a show coming up actually. It's um, April 28th, it's a Tuesday. It's happening at 7.30 at the Lakeville Area Arts Center. Um, you can reserve tickets beforehand at the Lakeville Area Arts Center website, which is lakevillearearts.com. Uh, and do that one more time, please. LakevilleAreaArtsCenter.com. Very good. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah, and also um, for anybody who might be interested in um, joining Pro ProAct, we have plenty of job openings right now um, and openings for participants as well. Great. Um, so if anybody wants to check out their, um, our information, you can go to our website too at ProActInc.org. Great. And then uh, thanks for watching. I'm Mark Hughes. Bye for now.